Hello, and welcome to The Analyst Angle. I'm Rob Streche, and I'm so excited to be here. This is a topic uh, that is near and dear to my heart. We're going to really dive into cloud-native applications, how they are deployed, where they are being deployed, and what is coming next for companies and what they should really consider. And I, I think this is one of those things, like I said on the last analyst angle, uh, you know, it, you can't do this yourself, so you got to bring some others in. And we're going to dive into this with a friend, uh, and we're really going to discuss, you know, where digital transformation is going because kind of the word is coming, you know, digital transformation is kind of falling out of favor a bit. But we really want to see that organizations are really weighing the cost benefit of modernizing these applications. And they're also looking at where to monetize or modernize them. I think a big piece of that is, is it on-premise or in cloud, or is it both? Additionally, they're looking at what specific cloud services, if any, they're going to use. And I think that's a big key to this because that has some ability to lock people into particular clouds. Uh, for today's discussion, like I was, you know, foreboding there a little bit is that fact that I'm thrilled to have a friend and former colleague in Paul Nashwadi joining. He's a principal uh, analyst over at Enterprise Strategy Group, which is a tech target company. Uh, he's re recently completed a whole bunch of research that I think is going to be very compelling to the audience. And we're going to kind of go in and unpack this a bit. Uh, what's going on in cloud native and how that's going to impact what you're planning over the next year or two or three even. Uh, so welcome, Paul. Uh, you know, glad to have you here. Thanks, Rob. You know, I'm really excited to be here. It's uh, it's it's really an exciting time in this space. You know, as a you know, as a this is my main focus area. This is what I this is what I live and breathe every day. Cloud native modernization, application modernization, and the growth of what organizations are doing. It's it's really definitely an exciting time, uh, and and very you know very exciting for organizations to kind of take on that journey. Yeah, no, I mean, both of us have been in and out of this for a number of years, and I think that it's uh, you you bring a very uh, unique perspective, which is why I love just getting on with you and riffing on this stuff. But let's kind of jump into the deep end a little bit here and try to get an understanding of what's going on in cloud native and what's the state of cloud native apps and development in your mind and what you're seeing. Yeah, definitely, Rob. I mean, you know, it is it is an exciting time, uh, as I was saying, and you know, we have been kind of uh, going through this for for many years. As like you mentioned, digital transformation. Uh, a lot of organizations kind of view, view that either as a noun or a verb. I like to kind of equate that to modernization. But let's jump right into the research. Uh, there's a lot of data that kind of goes along with uh, what organizations are looking at today, right? And when we start jumping right in. The microservices is a big part of that cloud native journey, right? And when we look at uh, research, we see that 64% of organizations are looking to build and deploy cloud native applications based on microservices architecture. So it's uh, it's pretty exciting to think about that, um, it, it, you know, but organizations also need to overcome the challenges because when you look at it, I like to tell the narrative of a past, present and future. Right uh, for application modernization, you have organizations that are working with their traditional or heritage applications, which may be a virtual machine. Then you look at today in the future, which is today's uh, set, which is basically looking at uh, containerization, microservices, orchestration, and such. And as I was stating, that sixty-four percent are delivering. Uh, of the respondents of our survey are delivering cloud native applications based on microservices. And we see that 33% are using multi-tier or traditional based uh, cloud native application approaches. And that's largely due to the heritage or siloed applications that are being deployed. Um, the interesting thing about this though, is not just today, what we see today, but what's interesting is what we're seeing in the next two years of growth. So when we look at the percentage of production applications and microservices and cloud native architectures, we see that, and the, basically we see that 46% of organizations today that responded are running 26 to 50% of their production applications on microservices. In contrast, what we asked was what is happening over the next two years, we see that um, 
39% of respondents indicate that they're running 51 to 74% of their production applications and microservices, and 29% are going to be running 75% or more of their applications on microservices architecture. So Rob, really exciting times here. Uh, it's a new world, a new technology stack. A lot of organizations are still getting their heads around it, but yeah, it's definitely exciting. Yeah, no, I, I think that's that's key. And in, in the conversations I'm having uh, with companies and uh, we're seeing the same thing where it's, hey, we're still trying to get our heads wrapped around this new modern architecture and which apps we're actually going to modernize. Because there, there is that cost benefit analysis. And I, I think especially in this type of economy, they're tying it back to revenue for more and more of what they're trying to achieve. And I, I think that's a huge piece of this. But I also think that, you know, we've both been around the space again for quite a while and organizations really aren't using one cloud. And I, I think that to me, you know, even back multiple years ago when I was at AWS was very clear that people are not going to use just one cloud. They don't want to be locked in and they're going to really look into using several clouds. It doesn't mean the same app lives in the same in multiple clouds. It can be pieces of apps or different apps that are in different clouds for different services and things like that. What are you seeing? I, I think, again, I, I, from what I know, I'm sure you're seeing something similar to this in the data as well. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's very, again, uh, and another kind of point that uh, organizations are looking at and, and very intensely looking at because it does add a level of complexity. But let's kind of take a step back and we will look at production applications. We find in our distributed cloud series, uh, uh, Cloud Native Research, that's an enterprise strategy group that does this annual study. Uh, in our 2022 study, we found that 88% of uh, respondents indicated that they're running their uh, production application workloads on a public cloud infrastructure. Um, in 2023, we found that the same number, 88%, are running those uh, the production applications in the public cloud. The difference, the change that occurred year over year was when we asked how many cloud service providers organizations are running on, um, in 2022, 11% of respondents indicated that they are running on a single uh, cloud service provider. Uh, so that means 89% of respondents were running on two or more clouds, to your point, Rob. But the other piece that comes up is in 2023's research, so the trending data that we're seeing, only 6% indicated that they're running on a single cloud service provider and 94% indicated that they're running on two or more clouds. So very interesting there. We also, another data point um, is 65% are running on four or more uh, clouds. So lots of uh, consideration around this, but also adds that level of complexity to organizations, right? So do you have the skill gap the, the, or the skill set to kind of manage those individual uh, technology stacks across different clouds? Do you have, uh, uh, you know, the resources that can actually accommodate these different things? Are you managing uh, these, these clouds uh, holistically or are you looking at it's more siloed? So there's a lot of questions and challenges, uh, Rob, when I think about this. And Rob, I think there's another piece that we could talk about, and it goes into that portability aspect. A absolutely, I, I think to your the manageability part of it is is a huge thing. And I mean, you have the announcement where Terraform, where I, Hashi, the parent of Terraform, is changing some of the licensing uh, to BSL on some of their applications, and what the impact is is not clear necessarily for everybody yet. But you have all of these folks trying to have these multi-cloud management systems. There's also Morpheus out there and a number of others that are really aimed at this and making it simple uh, to have that. But like you said, I think a big piece of it has been, you know, what we've been talking about for a while is that making things portable, uh, not because you're going to have the application span those multiple clouds, but you may want to repatriate and redeploy. Uh, I, I think that's what we've been seeing is that, you know, it's something around the, in the data we see, I think it was just out of Intel recently, was that about 14, 10 to 14% of companies have repatriated, but most of them are taking it out to another cloud. They're not running it necessarily on-prem. Uh, where, where do you stand in this whole debate uh, around uh, repatriation, multi-clouds and portability? Because uh, I think you, you definitely have a different angle on it as well. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, I wouldn't be in IT if I didn't say it depends, right? Because it always is a it's a it depends scenario. Um, I will kind of touch on it, uh, touch on it from this perspective. Um, portability is a key factor, and when we think about portability, it's you touched on the point about not running uh, applications across different clouds, and that could may or may not be a situation or may not be an an, an idea. I typically think of um, uh, co reducing complexity in the context of harmonization across these clouds. So having a cloud operating system, and I and I kind of put that in air quotes, you know, like a, a cloud operating system that allows you to do uh, management and monitoring and, and, and functionality across different cloud providers and harmonize it across basically public cloud, private cloud, as well as on-prem. The interesting point about portability is we asked this question in this uh, cloud native research and, and what we found is 20% of respondents indicated that it is critical that their applications are, uh, are, por uh, are portable and they can have the ability to, to move those cloud native applications across different cloud ar ar uh, architectures or ecosystems. Uh, we find that 67% indicate it's very important to their organization. The interesting thing is, and again, on trending data, when you look at cloud native deployment environments, um, we see that 48% of organizations today indicate that they're running their cloud native architecture applications deployed in the public cloud. And 42% today indicate that they're running their cloud native uh, applications running across public clouds and private clouds, including edge locations and private data centers. Now, what's interesting is we asked about trending information, where they think they're going in the next two years. Today, only 11% of respondents indicated that they're running their cloud native applications um, on-prem and an on-prem data center. But yet in two years, 30% of the respondents indicate that they're running those cloud native applications on-prem, going to your repatriation comment um, on, on, you know, on where it's going. So we also see in the next two years, a drop off going from 48% running on public clouds to 43%, so a slight drop there. And we see going from 42% to 28%, on a combination of a hybrid public cloud and private cloud and edge locations. But we see a significant jump in on-prem data centers hosting cloud native applications. So net net Rob, I think it comes down to, you know, organizations are thinking about what's best for themselves. Repatriation is not just about cost, but it's about compliance, regulations, latency, performance, you name it. There's a whole number of reasons why organizations do it. Uh, but yeah, it's an interesting kind of paradigm shift that organizations are going through. Yeah, no, I, I think it is. And I, I think to your point, it's a lot of the cloud native operating systems or and the manageability and all of that can be done on-prem or in the cloud or in colo for that matter. And we're seeing a huge uptick in use of colo and specific clouds or sovereign clouds in specific areas. And I, I think that's contributing to this multi-cloud, multi-premise uh, type of application. And I, I think you know, the cloud native apps are designed for this. So they're designed to have the data in one place and have you know, different layers of the stack. Like you were saying, is it traditional you know, app layer and uh, you know, visualization layer? on top of a data layer. And I think organizations are really rethinking and saying, hey, that wasn't so bad, especially if I wanna keep my data in a particular place. Uh, but I think they're also leaning pretty heavily on open source, which I, I think you and I are both, you know, big open source guys, very, very positive on what's going on in the cloud native foundation and in, you know, been to KubeCon and you know both of us will be back out there in Chicago in a you know couple months now. Uh, what are you seeing from a supportability perspective? Because that that's the one area around open source that I always find very interesting. I I've, I know a couple companies that are very heavy uh, users of the Hashi stack, and some of the components they're using are really pure open source components. No, with no support contracts whatsoever. Uh, what, what are you seeing in your data that, you know, 
jives with that or kind supports of supports it. Plays yeah. With that. Yeah. Su supports it as no, no pun intended there, but yeah. <laughs> no, it's uh it's, it's interesting. It is another interesting perspective. It would be a miss not to talk about open source when we're talking about cloud native development, especially when we, we led off this conversation around microservices and the, the tech stack that goes along with the ecosystem, but open source is a, is an interesting um, area. There's a lot of reasons to go with open source. It's community, there's uh, tested, well-rounded testing, um, you know, but there's also, uh, you know, the perspective of what do you do when you purchase and or you use and deploy open source within your ecosystem? And, you know, you can kind of do it in a number of different ways. Um, organizations can look at it and have their own bench, right? If they have their own bench to support it and they, they flex their technical muscle to say, hey, we can do this. We got this. We don't need any help. That's good, right? Um, organizations are paying for that bench, right? They're paying for those resources. Alternatively, um, most organizations are looking for paid enterprise level support. In fact, what we found in our cloud native research that 48% of respondents indicated that they're looking for paid enterprise level support. Um, and then we also found that 24% of respondents indicate that they're looking for um, some paid support, but mostly non-paid community support. So that means that their bench is leveraging the community for that, for that support. And then we found that 18% are looking for a pay-as-you-go kind of support model. Now, with all that said, in my opinion, uh, you know, just in my assessment, you're paying for it one way or the other. You're either paying for it with your bench or you're going to pay for it with, uh, you know, having a, an organization that you, you, you run, you know, a vendor that supports you in that space. Um, when I talk to CIOs and I ask about their, you know, number one challenge, uh, their number one challenge is modernization. And they run into the challenge of, uh, you know, keeping the wheels on the bus with the resources they have. So to modernize usually brings on another set of projects and another set of initiatives. You mentioned digital transformation at the beginning of the, the session here. That's a big kind of push, that modernization push. The problem is, is, you know, either they don't have resources or they try to find or hire resources, which is really hard to do these days. And then the other side of it is once you've hired those resources, it takes about nine to 12 months to come up to speed. So the alternative is to work with a service delivery partner in order to, uh, to do that. So uh, many kind of directions and many approaches, again, I use the term, it depends, but it really does depend on the, the situation, the configuration that your the organizations are trying to achieve here. But uh, research shows that they are looking for that support and vendors to support them. Definitely. And I, I think that it's not surprising. That, and I, I think, you know, it was OpenShift doing over a billion in ARR last year is just right. crazy. And I, I think it shows that Open has won as part of it. And now I think, but people are looking also at how, what's going on with the licensing and what, what's going on with open source licensing and licensing in general and trying to protect themselves from that. And I think to your point, you're paying for it one way or the other either through the support contract or not. And I, I think that's why it's been uh, very, very interesting. But uh, so, hey, I, this has been great. Uh, you know, I think we're gonna do this, you know, a couple more times at least. Uh, you know, this is a lot of fun and there's so much we didn't get to. And I know you have a lot of data and we'll put the link uh, to the data down below uh, to your cloud native studies and the cloud series that you and ESG and Tech Target do and everybody can go and check that out and find out. Uh, it's always you know, just a ton of fun to you know, riff with a friend and get to go into some of this detail to help people understand what's going on and really separate the noise from the signal. Uh, that's what we like to do here at theCUBE is really help people understand that. I really appreciate you coming on the Analyst Angle and I look forward to the next time. Thanks Rob, it's been a, it's been a pleasure. Thank you and stay tuned for the next Analyst Angle. We'll bring you some breaking news on and deep in-depth in research that we continue to do. Really, again, extracting the noise from the signal and helping you understand how you can plan your different projects in cloud native, security, sustainability is coming pretty soon. Stay tuned and we'll be back.